Courtney and welcome to my channel. If you haven't already watched it, I suggest watching my reading vlog for May, which was Black Buck by Matteo Ascaripor, where I dive into a little bit more about the content, the plot, the characters, and my overall thoughts about it. Also, feel free to follow me over on my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts, as well as I'm dabbling a little bit into Readerly, which is a brand new reading I don't, not necessarily like star rating kind of application, but one that you can get like a percentage of how likely you are to like it. All right, so we are filming this on Memorial Day weekend, which my pool opened yesterday. However, as you can see, I am wearing a sweatshirt in May slash June, and this is the June TBR, which I was hoping to be like, okay, we're gonna get ready for summer, have like a cute tank top or like bathing suit top or something on. No, Ohio has other plans for what the summer is going to look like. I do have the windows open a little bit just to get some fresh air flowing through here, but I am ready for some warmer weather to read by the pool, to just be outside and meet up with other bookstagrammers and different coffee shops and things like that. So let's hope that the next few weeks I won't have to be wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants. I'm also wearing slippers, you can't see them, but that is the state of where we're at right now in Ohio on May 30th. But anyhow, I'm gonna go over the print and audiobooks I plan to read for the month of June. There are some mix of ones that are still on my Read Like a Gilmore challenge, which that ends the end of this month as well. So I wanna knock out a few more prompts, but all of these books are ones that are on my shelf, at least the print versions. The audiobooks are ones that I read about in uh, Modern Mrs. Darcy's Summer Reading Guide, the 10th annual one that was just released last week, I believe. And I have a post about that on my Instagram, how excited I am, and different books I've picked out, either reserved through the library in print form or reserved on my Libby app for audiobook form. But I will go over at least two that I know will be available in terms of like the wait period because Libby is a like a borrowing kind of application. So I have to wait until they're at least published or people in front of me have returned them to the Libby app. So let's get into the books. So the first book I have is my June reading vlog selection. So I didn't put this up as a vote on Instagram because I knew I wanted to read this book and I think it would have been a fan favorite anyway. So I didn't want to put through this whole thing about putting a vote up for different books that I was going to read or it would have been like what should I read for the month of month of June Midnight Sun Midnight Sun Midnight Sun or Midnight Sun so you get the idea so this is a retelling or new perspective of Twilight by Stephanie Meyer in Edward's perspective so it is much chunkier let me see do I have the yes so Twilight Midnight Sun you can see the difference height wise width wise I guess Edward has a lot more to say. I'm not sure. I think this came out during quarantine or I think a time where I'm like, oh, I wanna get so excited and get some books from online ordering. So I had pre-ordered this and I was super excited about it. Wore like my t-shirt that said Team Edward on it for like an Instagram post. And then it kind of fell out of my TBR. And, and I was like, yeah, I'll pick it up later, pick it up later. Here we are a year later. And it is happening, finally. So maybe it's like, a, oh, I let the, the craze kind of die down a little bit and like reemerge and get excited about it again, who knows. But yeah, I'm excited to see what Edward was thinking in a lot of the situations that he and Bella were in, or even when he was on his own. This also satisfies one of my Read Like a Gilmore prompts about a love story. It's when Luke is telling Lorelai that he's in, he's all in this thing between them. So yeah, another prompt for the challenge. Next we have Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. And this, I think I got during Independent Bookstore Day this past April. So I went with my friend Lauren at Art of Reviews to Joseph Beth Booksellers, and I wanted to try to expand my genres out a little bit more. So at the moment, I really don't have a favorite genre. I kind of read all over the place, but I knew I didn't read too many horror or thriller 
or mystery type of books. So that was my goal was to get like a couple. So this was one of the ones I picked out. I also picked out Eight Perfect Murders. So this one I'd seen around a bunch. This was it's mentioned in a few books I've read and been on several lists. But this follows a writer, a crime writer and his editor. And apparently there's a one of his last manuscripts involves a potential like actual murder. So I think that could be kind of interesting. I love like the book within a book kind of situation we have going on here. And yeah, I don't know when it comes to like thriller, horror, mystery, I don't know how like bloody they get. Like, I don't, I just don't know. Like I've read psychological thrillers, which does have like violence and like some like blood, but it's more about the like my heart beats racing. I want to get through these pages, like who done it kind of things. With this, I don't really know what to expect, and I'm, I'm I don't really get too queasy. Like I don't like watching certain movies if like the blood looks super realistic. If it's like a I don't know, I know what you did last summer, or like um like a corny murder kind of movie, I don't really mind it too much. But it's like Saw and like movies like that where I'm like nope 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 nope. So yeah, we'll see if I get scared out of my mind. I don't know. Next we have Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall and this was gifted to me last summer I believe it was on my wish list and a fantastic bookstagrammer had given it to me and I was super appreciative of it. So this follows two different guys. One is like troublesome, his parents divorced when he was younger, they're both like rock stars and now that the father is like coming back into the limelight they need their son to be on his best behavior and like that's just not happening. So their plan is to have him date like a nice boy, somebody who hasn't really gotten into trouble, been in the public eye too much in like a negative kind of way. So they start developing this fake relationship. We all know how that goes. <laughs> so yeah, I think this will be a really cute read. It's LGBTQIA book, which I'm super excited about. And just like the cover so fun. I also love Britain, London, anything British. So very excited about that. I wish maybe I could have read this on audiobook and maybe they had like accents or something, but if not, I can imagine it just fine. Then we have The Windfall by Diksha Basu. And this also is a read like a Gilmore prompt for a book about an adventure. And this is when Lorelai and Rory are in the car, I believe they don't know it yet, but to Harvard after Lorelai calls off her wedding to Max and is saying like, we're on our way, not sure where, but we're going kind of, I don't know the exact quote, I am sorry. <laughs> but this follows a family in New Delhi and they are moving to a different part of the country or the city because they came into a large sum of money. So they're kind of changing their way of life. So that kind of comes with its own consequences of trying to keep with the Joneses in a way. Is that, if that's the right phrase? I'm really bad at phrases and like cliche statements like that. I mess them up all the time. But they're trying to fit in with their new status of being wealthy. And that's just not who they are in terms of like their personalities or like who they want to be. So they come into some different situations. They meet people that maybe they wouldn't have been friends with before in their old situation, but do they want to be friends with them now or have relationships with those folks? So yeah, I think this will be cool. This was a gift from my brother and sister during my birthday last year and it was through a like coffee and book subscription box and I got two books and the second book will also be for the June TBR. And that book is Clock Dance by Ann Tyler. So this fits into Read Like a Gilmore as well for an aspiring, inspiring book. So this follows a woman as she has been like very accomplished and she goes throughout life and not necessarily finds a partner or has kids, but is longing to do that. But she reaches an age where she's like going to be like a grandmother. Darn, my battery is flashing, so I'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Who knew you could plug in your camera to charge it and record at the same time? Not I. No, I do. All right, where did I leave off? <laughs> I think it was me talking about, oh, she's reached an age where she's kind of longing for that familial, like being a grandmother, a mother to somebody. And then she gets brought out to meet basically these strangers and kind of be 
a guardian to them or to to watch over them in some kind of way so yeah we learn about her life back and forth it's about self-discovery and kind of finding yourself in a place you didn't think possible and that I kind of like where it's like the unexpected and it was something that you've always longed for in this case a family and it just came in a different kind of way then we have The Maidens by Alex Michalides and this I found through a kind of, I think it was an influencer program where the Little Free Library LLC or association partnered with, was it Celadon Books? Yeah, and they also partnered with influencers around the country and they left a copy of this in like several Little Free Libraries around the US. So there was a couple in Cincinnati and I was able to find one of them. It was so, it was so fun, it was like a scavenger hunt kind of thing. So yeah, I picked this up and this is the same author of The Silent Patient, which that I listened to on audiobook, which was super fascinating and I, I enjoyed it, but I, kind of guess what was going to happen maybe like halfway to two-thirds of the way through so but it was still enjoyable nonetheless this however follows a, a like a secret society of women and this professor at Cambridge who this one psychologist is I think she's a psychologist therapist is trying to investigate because she thinks this professor is a murderer and like all these women in his classes end up being found dead so yeah this should be interesting it has like some greek philosophy in there i think that's what he's a professor of a uh, greek tragedy professor but uh, yeah i just love the cover it's pretty stunning as well and this will be out the, in june so i think well depending on when in june i hope to have this done and maybe a review for but if not no big deal either the last print book oh boy Written in My Own Heart's Blood by Diana Gableden. I I need to finish this series before at least November because that's when Tell the Bees I've Con Home comes out. I think that's the title of it, her eighth or ninth book. And yeah, that is the goal. So I have between now and November to finish this book. This is where I'm at. I just need to finish it. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Oh, man. Man, I just can't believe I haven't finished it yet. Like I I very rarely leave books unfinished like this or like, oh, I'll come back to it and like have a bookmark in it because then I end up forgetting about it and like have to reread it over again. But like this book I've had on my mind and known I've needed to finish. It's not that it's bad. It's just, it's chunky. I've said this several times. Bah! So maybe this should have been my reading vlog <laughs> selection just to finish this book. Ugh. But yes, here we go. Then I have two audiobooks I have on, I guess one is already downloaded and one will be available soon, says my Libby app. The first one is A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. So I had just finished Bringing Down the Duke last week, which I thought was super enjoyable, really cute rom, not rom-com, kind of, but romance novel set back in the late 1800s about women's suffrage in England. So I thought that was really cool to bring the historical aspect in there. And then A Rogue of One's Own, let's read the description. I just saw it at Joseph Beth Booksellers, I think when I was there for Independent Bookstore Day and loved the cover, but ended up not getting it because it's like in a series of, what is it, Extraordinary, a League of Extraordinary Women novel, which was also with Bringing Down the Duke. Bringing Down the Duke was first. I don't know if there's interlacing or like crossover characters at all, but I wanted to read that one first before reading this one. But anything in England, I am all for, but it's not letting me, oh, here we go. Oh, more suffragettes, which is pretty cool. And it's about a publishing house and, ooh, okay. Now they screwed together enough capital to control one of London's major public publishing houses with one purpose, to use it in a coup against Parliament. But who could have predicted that the one person standing between her and success is her old nemesis and London's undisputed Lord of Sin, Lord Ballantine, or that he would be willing to hand over the reins for an outrageous price, a night in her bed? Holy cow, there's a lot going on. I'm sure there's going to be some like steamy moments in there. <laughs> I love how I'm like, oh, let me tell you what this book is about, and then like start casually reading the synopsis and then just reading the whole synopsis. So sometimes you just need to do that to figure out what the book's about because I couldn't remember 
but I knew I wanted to continue it and it came into my queue. And then the last audiobook is A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Naney. And this is about a girl from Miami, Florida, who's over in England for the summer. And so she's staying with family friends for a few months in Winchester, England and she finds it lacking Miami flavor. So, ooh, I like this already, kind of blending two different cultures together and seeing what comes of it and how much she, like, not necessarily influences the town, but like they both impact each other in a way. So that I think will be really fun. So yeah, so those are at least the two. I'll tell you what else is on my holds list if you are interested. Things that are on my list, The Lines of Fifth Avenue, One True Loves. So those are older backlist books, but I think the ones that are coming up are new and off of the summer reading guide from Modern Mrs. Darcy. So we have Hang the Moon, Tokyo Ever After, While Justice Sleeps, The Plot, The Final Revival of Opal and Nev, Clara and the Sun, Malibu Rising, and One Last Stop. So those range from, let's see, seven weeks to 16 weeks. So probably not all of these I'm going to get to this summer or June, but yeah, I can't wait and some of these I also have print holds at the library for, so I guess whichever one comes first, or if I'm not too busy with print books, I will read the print versions, or else just wait for audio. So that is the plan. So anyway, those are the books I plan to read for the month of June. As always, these are subject to change, and they usually do change, especially when it comes to audiobooks, if like I'm not fast enough to get through them. And that sounds like terrible, like get through them and move on to the next. But if it's like an 18 hour audiobook and then another book comes into the the queue and I have to delay it because I want to finish the one that I'm reading that kind of um I don't know alters the the weeks that I can have them available and so one book that is available in seven weeks I if I'm not ready by the time it's here I need to delay it like another week and then it just depends on who's next in line and yada 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 so that always affects what's going on and then Depending, there has been many times where I've stopped a book. I did mention that Midnight Sun will be my reading vlog, but I don't know if that will be the first book I read. I don't know. Maybe The Maidens will be the first book or Magpie Murders. I'm not sure. What am I reading right now? I'm finishing A Darker Shade of Magic and The House in the Cerulean Sea right now. So those are YA fantasy kind of books. So maybe I'll do something else. I mean, like, Maidens and Magpie Murders are murder mystery, so those are different genres. And Boyfriend Material, Material and Midnight Sun are YAs, so maybe I'll hold on those. Yeah, maybe I'll do one of the, the murder books first. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. So, yeah, let me know in the comments what books you plan to read for the month of June, any of the ones that I've read that you're excited about, or you have, like any thoughts about without spoiling let me know as well but thank you so much for watching this video if you like it please give it a thumbs up feel free to hit subscribe or the notification bell to know when i post videos next i usually post on mondays and if not it's a tuesday because i couldn't finish my reading vlog in time like what happened with black buck so yeah i'm going to go get warm I'm going to go for a run later. I'm still in training for a few races in the next few months and through the rest of 2021. And then, yeah, get some reading in. What else is new? So, yes, I hope you have a great day and happy reading.